It's the weekend and you know what that means. It's this week in rideshare news. On Monday, Lyft announced new security measures to keep rideshare passengers safe. Continuous criminal background checks. Lyft's new policy requires that drivers take background checks every 12 months and to take selfies to prove who they are. Why neither rideshare company has addressed driver safety? I don't know. Your guess is good as mine. But Lyft responded to the issue with, we have strict driving standards that prohibit drivers who have more than three minor violations in the past three years, like accidents or traffic violations, a major violation in the past three years, such as driving on a suspended license or reckless driving, a DUI or drug-related violation in the last seven years, or any driving-related convictions in the past seven years, such as a hit and run, or felonies involving a vehicle. These standards may vary slightly in certain regions based on local laws. Driver record checks are rerun at least annually, and any driver who does not pass these checks are deactivated from the platform. From what I understand, these things are already in play. From what I understand as an Uber driver, I get my background is checked every single year, and Every once in a while, Uber asks me for a selfie and I can't do anything until I give them one. I applaud Lyft's small effort in trying to make these uh, roads safer for all rideshare passengers, but I'm pretty tired of these companies not addressing driver safety and it's something that's gonna come out of my mouth at least once a week. Speaking of safety, Uber releases a feature allowing passengers to choose the sex of their drivers. More specifically, the program is called Women Preferred View, and it allows women passengers to select the gender of their driver. After several weeks of research of preferences of drivers in the region uh, due to cultural differences and what have you, Uber felt that this program was necessary. So while U.S. lawmakers have done their best to increase security for rideshare passengers. No one really is talking about this kind of thing here. In addition, none of the bills that lawmakers have presented even address driver safety. One could argue that there are a lot of restrictions on women in Saudi Arabia, especially regarding banning the mixing of the sexes in public places and what have you, but things are improving. And to me, this seems like a win for both women drivers and women passengers. When I first started driving, I was wondering like, why doesn't Uber or Lyft allow you to choose the sex of your driver? Um, when we're talking about issues of comfort, it's just natural for some people to feel more aligned or more comfortable with the same sex. And honestly, I feel like if the option was given that there still be enough business to go around. I know this is not gonna be a popular topic because most of you guys are watching are probably consider yourselves being male. In all essence, being that you have female family members and what have you, do you think this would be a good idea and something Uber should consider here in the US? How, if you drive in Southern California, the, the question is to drive for Coachella or not. And over the past three years that I've been a driver, this is a question that I have said not to, but or, or no rather, but I've heard of some really epic tales where Uber drivers and Lyft drivers have cleaned up. Now, when I go on Facebook forums and I see folks talking about it, it's like hit or miss. There's people who brag about the crazy earnings that they get. And then there's those people that are like, I came down here and I did what? Hopefully this provides some clarity for you guys. A publication decided to follow a group of drivers to Coachella to see if it is, in fact, a money-making opportunity or a waste of time. And now while you can go into their stories and you can go in depth, some people did win, some people did lose, it seems as though things have changed. It seems as though there has been a pay cut, and it seems as though even though these companies offer huge bonuses for people that are able to complete rides. It's really hard to complete a ride when you're sitting and waiting and sitting and waiting. And we know that people go to extremes to make sure that they come out on top by not getting hotel rooms, by sleeping in their cars, things like that. Um, that's kind of skewing the results in my opinion, but it seems about 50-50 in terms of it being a money-making opportunity or not. If you're curious about the article and it's a long one, you can hit the link in the description and and find out for yourself. Uh, I would never tell you to drive for Coachella, but if you decide to do it, you know, just share with us. Just share with us how, how it went. 
this uh, this article brought me some joy last week. Lyft is piloting what they called a new program, which is reminiscent of the old taxi cab line. Instead of matching drivers with passengers, they're going to have a line that it picks up folks that are going to use Lyft and carries them to a designated location. And they're going to give them a code based off of where they're going. They're going to be matched up with that driver, and then the driver will then take that person to their destination. The driver will not know where they're going until you're in their car, the same old deal as it is right now, and off you go. It's funny how we're using technology and all this stuff, but it really boils down to it's just an old taxi cab line. It's This is literally what's been done by taxis at airports forever. So... <laughs> Not an innovative tool, guys. Like, this thing has been this way for a very long time. So, anyway. Good job, Lyft. I'm kind of cynical today. I'm sorry, guys. It's been a long week. So I've got feel-good stories because we like to feel good. Yeah, we do. I was hanging out in the Uber break room last week and I came across a post by a fellow Uber driver who said that her nephew owes his life to a good Samaritan who happened to be another driver. This man spotted her nephew along the side of the road. The young man had been carjacked and shot and he called the emergency services, which uh, in essence saved the young man's life. We're not sure about this status of his health. His auntie was very happy to share the story and wanted to let folks know that there are still good people out there that go above and beyond. And I just, it just warmed my heart and my prayers go out to her and her family and her loved ones. And I am hoping that all is well. Um, and if I get some details on that case, I will update you guys as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are not subscribed to Harry's channel, you need to do that right now. I'll wait. Hit the red button. Okay, awesome. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you guys like seeing my face and want to hear more from me next week, please give me a thumbs up. We love those things. Also, if you have any news, any tips, anything you want to share with me, feel good stories. I'm in need of lots of those. Leave those in the comments. You can also contact me directly on my Facebook, Drive Girl Drive. And if you're curious about what I do on my channel, which is Drive Girl Drive, you can go and check me out over there. I go in depth, a little bit more in depth than I do here on a lot of stories. So don't hesitate to check me out. Hope you guys have a great week and I'll be talking to you soon. Bye.